Welcome, everybody, to Kicking It With Crowder, episode 33. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, I am your host, Tyler Crowder. I am in the Columbus Podcasting Studio today, so thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, today I'm going to be bringing you my mock draft uh, 2.0. I already released one earlier in a few weeks ago. Now I'm releasing my second one, guys. So uh, stay tuned for some uh, very, very interesting picks. I have uh, some SEC guys you may be familiar with going very, very high in the draft. So I've had some players move up. I've also had some players slide as well. So I'm excited to bring this to you today. Uh, and don't forget to comment, like, and share down below, guys, for the for those of you who are following me on the Facebook Live. Um, but we will be putting out all this post-editing stuff tomorrow uh, or the next day, guys. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and if you cannot... Um, if you don't already follow me on Facebook, guys, you can find me on Facebook. I am also on YouTube, the Apple um, podcasting app, and also Spotify and the iHeartRadio app, guys. So if you do not uh, already follow me, guys, go ahead and click this uh, down below. Give it a like, share it so more people can get involved, okay? So um, with that being said, I just want to go ahead and get started with my uh first annual uh, NFL Kicking It With Crowder mock draft. This is my uh, second uh, mock draft, guys. So with that being said, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals are now on the clock. So uh, the Cincinnati Bengals have had this number one pick for a few uh, months, guys. Uh, they have a lot of holes to fill on that defense. Uh, also, uh, the quarterback situation uh, could be addressed very early for them. But they're they're not just one player away. They need a lot of uh, of weapons. And and right there at the top of the draft, and you'll ask most people, he is uh, the top rated player on most big boards. He is number four on my big board. But uh, quarterback Joe Burrow, uh, LSU, threw 60 touchdowns this past year. Uh, six four. 220 pound. Uh, he is an Ohio kid at heart, so I would be very, very excited for the Cincinnati Bengals to uh, select him. He's a winner. He's very competitive. Uh, he's got a very good uh, high football IQ, and also his dad was a coach. So uh, the 2019 tape definitely did not lie. Uh, he had a lot of weapons around him, two stud wide receivers, also a uh, two offensive linemen they're going to get drafted this year. Uh, Hilaire Edwards, the running back. So Joe Joe Burrow had a lot going on this past year, but I will say uh, that that Joe Burrow will be the number one pick for the Cincinnati Bengals. So with that being said, uh, with the first pick overall, they could go Chase Young here, but um, or or trade out of the spot. But with with the first overall pick in my kicking it with Crowder mock draft 2.0, I have Joe Burrow, uh, quarterback LSU, being selected to the Cincinnati Bengals. So uh, with that being said, that is going to bring up uh, your. You're going to hear this again. And that being said, the number two overall pick now belongs to the Washington Redskins. So now the Washington Redskins are on the clock and uh, they bring in Ron Rivera from the Carolina Panthers who let him go Pat, this past year. Got a heck of a coach. Uh, really, really uh, good coach. And uh, I'm excited to see uh, some leadership being brought into Washington. We know their GM. We know their owner uh, have not got it done the past 20 years or so. I think Ron Rivera is an upgrade over uh, Joe Burrow. I mean, I'm sorry, over John Gruden, uh, who was the former, uh, who was the former uh, coach for the Washington Redskins. So, uh, Jim Ron Rivera steps in, and you know, there's a possibility you select Tua Tagovailoa at number two. But I actually have them uh, going defense, and they've they've already got four or five first round picks on that defensive line. I, I have them adding another one. Uh, so, with the number two overall pick, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Uh, I'm sorry. Number two pick, the Washington Redskins select Chase Young, defensive end, the Ohio State University. And Chase Young, guys, I'm not sure if you got to watch a lot of his tape this past year. He's the number one rated player on my board. So uh, he's the number one overall rated player on the board. He's very, very good with his hands. He's got a quick bull rush, but also can hit you with uh, on the edge with his speed. So he's a speed rusher, bull rush type player. Uh, got him graded at a 97 overall. So he's a top tier impact day one player you're going to, to put him into the lineup and uh, he's going to be a starter day one possibly 
could uh, produce very, very many sacks this next year. I, I predict over 10 sacks this year uh, for Chase Young. He actually had 16 and a half sacks this past year at Ohio State. So he's a high impact player from day one. And I'm really, really excited to see uh, Chase Young uh, translate to the NFL. Reminds me a lot of a Miles Garrett type player. So he was a five-star player coming out. Uh, he's he's a uh, he's a very very highly touted player. My number one player on my board, but I have him going number two to the Washington Redskins. So, uh, with that being said, the number th now that puts uh, the Detroit Lions on the board at number three. And the Detroit Lions they could use a lot. They've uh, traded away their playmaker cornerback Darius Slay. Uh, also let Damian Harrison go. So uh, big voids at defensive tackle and cornerback. And that's kind of really what it came down to me here uh, with the uh, with the pick. It was either um, Jeff Akuda, the cornerback from Ohio State, or Derek Brown, the big defensive tackle from Auburn. Uh, in my first mock draft, I did have Akuda going number three. But just the more tape I watch, the more uh, the more I hear about Derek Brown, uh, the more and more intriguing of a pick he is to me at number three. Uh, kind of reminds people of an Indomitian Sioux who did start his career with the Detroit Lions. So uh, with the third overall pick in the uh, Kicking It With Crowder Mock Draft 2.0, I actually have the Detroit Lions selecting uh, Derek Brown, defensive tackle from Auburn. So uh, the reason I went there is just the guy is a playmaker. He's a dancing bear. I mean, he's 6'5", 320 pounds. Uh, he's a very, very uh, good player. Is going to be a run stopper immediately. As soon as he steps on the field, he is going to be a first and second down uh, type player. Can even produce some pass rushing uh, down the road from the interior. But Derek Brown, man, the more and more you watch his film, I mean, he is a stud. They don't make guys like Derek Brown. They just don't make them that big, that massive, who can who are light on his feet as well. I mean, the guy ran like a 5140. I mean, he's a big, big guy uh, running and coming after people. He's going to plug in day one and start. And uh, I really, really think Derek Brown is the pick for Detroit at number three. I would not be shocked if you did uh, see Jeff Akuda, uh, quarterback, cornerback from the Ohio State uh, come in at number three. But uh, I got Derek Brown from Auburn going at number three overall, guys. So what do you think about that? Uh, my first three picks, guys, I got Joe Burrow, uh, Chase Young, and Derek Brown coming off the board, guys. Uh, you agree, disagree, let me know down below. So uh, I'm going to continue this uh, mock draft and this gonna if you hear that sound uh, you know who is uh, who it's it's the next team is coming up on the board and that puts the New York Giants uh, coming in with the fourth overall pick that now they are on the clock so um, last year they 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 shook the world and took Daniel Jones quarterback uh, from Duke last year and he actually had a surprisingly good season uh, 24 touchdowns 12 interceptions uh, does have to hold on to the football and one part of holding on to the football is getting one of these big nasty linemen to come block for Daniel Jones. You could also see uh, the the uh, Giants new GM. Uh, you could see them go off an outside linebacker right here with Isaiah Simmons, but with the number four overall pick in this draft, I am going offensive tackle for the Giants to protect that prize possession you just traded up for last year. Uh, so I actually have them selecting with the fourth overall pick, the New York football Giants select uh, offensive tackle Dredrick Willis from Alabama, uh, another guy who is 6'5", 320 pounds, uh, going to make an impact from day one. You're going to plug him in. He's going to play right tackle from you for you day one. If you've watched any of his tape, his 2018 tape matched up with his 2019 tape. Actually did not give a sack up this past season. He's got a mean, nasty streak to him. Dredrick Willis, I got him as my number one offensive tackle on the board, and I got him going to the Giants at number four, guys. So you could also see them go linebacker. Would not be shocked if you saw them uh, get a, a Isaiah Simmons if he is still on the board. But uh, I just think with, with what you got to do, protecting the quarterback and everything, I got them selecting Dredrick Willis, offensive tackle from Alabama. So uh, with the fifth pick that this puts on the clock, uh, the Miami Dolphins are now on the clock. So uh, this is a team with three first-round draft picks. Uh, they have a lot of capital to maybe move up in the draft, uh, been linked to maybe trading up with Detroit, giving up 5, 18, and possibly 39 overall pick to get up and get to it. If I was the Detroit Lions, I would very, very uh, highly consider that uh, 
that you probably get uh, one of your two guys at five, either Jeff Akuda or Derek Brown, if those are the two guys you want. So Detroit could definitely trade this pick uh, to Miami, but I, I got Miami uh, staying pat right here in this draft. Did not do any NFL mock draft trades. So I do have the Miami Dolphins, and they need a lot. They did have a good offseason. They, they signed Byron Jones. They signed some uh, some players that are going to make an impact for them. Uh, but they need the quarterback. You know, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is not the answer. And uh, Josh Rosen, I, he certainly hasn't proved anything in his first two years uh, in the NFL. So uh, with the fifth overall pick in the NFL, uh, my NFL mock draft 2.0, I actually have the Miami Dolphins, and you could see them go Justin Herbert here, but I actually have them selecting Tua Tagovailoa, quarterback from Alabama. Uh, the only issue with him, guys, is the uh, is the injury. Uh, you don't hear anything about what he can't do on the football field. He can make all the throws. He's got great feet, uh, quick release. If if they can scheme, uh, whoever has him, if they can scheme him and get the ball out early and uh, really protect Tua, I think it's a great investment for them. Uh, Miami hasn't had a, a quarterback since Dan Marino. They passed on Drew Brees because of an injury issue in 2006. You don't want to get burned again and pass on to a tag of Viola, and he turns into a Drew Brees type player. So, uh, with the fifth pick, I got uh, Miami Dolphins selecting Tua Tagovailoa, a quarterback from Alabama. All right, guys. So, uh, with that being said, that now puts the LA Chargers on the clock. And the LA Chargers, guys, they have a lot uh, to deal with. Um, their defense is very, very good, but they, they may replace the quarterback. They could also go outside linebacker here, Isaiah Simmons, to kind of pair with Derwin James. They're very similar type players. Uh, so Isaiah Simmons, I had him going six to the Chargers in my first mock draft. But uh, the more I think about it, uh, Justin Herbert has really killed this process. He has he has done great uh, in the uh, Senior Bowl. He did good at the Combine. His senior tape matches up with 32 touchdowns, uh, just four interceptions. He's big. He's strong. He's got a big arm. Uh, and I have him being selected uh, with the number six overall pick to the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, so the Los Angeles Chargers with a six pick select Justin Herbert, quarterback, Oregon. Uh, like I said, smart, athletic quarterback can kind of um, replace Philip Rivers, who's been there the past 15 years or so. Uh, I really think that uh, Justin Herbert, he's a West Coast guy. He's from Oregon. He'd kind of fit in out there. And uh, I think that Justin Herbert is going to step in. Uh, probably won't start from day one, but I would definitely see him taking over the realm uh, at some point this season. So I got Justin Herbert uh, starting half the season this year for the Los Angeles Chargers and building on that uh, in the future. So uh, if you're if you're hanging, if you're if you're staying around guys uh, I have some uh, some really really good players still left on the board so stay tuned uh, for that if you're if you're watching on Facebook right now guys don't forget to comment don't forget to like down below share this let more people see it and of course we are live on Facebook but we have all the post editing and everything coming up here what's up Tyler man thank you for watching today okay all right so now with that being said that is going to put the Carolina Panthers are now on the clock in my NFL mock draft 2.0 and uh, the Carolina Panthers they want to knock this uh, pick out of the park uh, because this is Matt Rule's very first pick with this organization uh, Carolina Panthers are in a new direction they've released Cam Newton and now given Christian McCaffrey a big big contract for a running back so um, Matt Rule really needs to hit this he's got some job security so he can get a little risky on this he's got a five-year deal um, so he'll at least get you know three years out of that deal at least uh, but you know uh, coaches, if you don't win, you can be out early. So he's got to he's got to hit this pick, and I I don't see them uh, passing on this player right here at number seven. Uh, they need to replace a Luke Keekley who retired this past year. They lost Thomas Davis a few seasons ago. Really haven't replaced him. So with the seventh overall pick, I have the Carolina Panthers selecting outside linebacker from Clemson Isaiah Simmons, and the tape on Isaiah Simmons is unbelievable. He played slot corner. He played safety this past. Last year he played linebacker he edge rushed i mean the guy is 6'4 uh, ran a 4.3940 at 6'4", 240 pounds. He is going to make an impact day one, and I would not be surprised if he leads the league in tackles at some point. He is that type of player. Very good in his coverage skills, and also um, 
you could see Carolina look for an interior defensive lineman here, possibly a uh, Derek Brown if he's on the board or a um, a Javon Kinlaw from South Carolina. But uh, also Jeff Akuda, if he's still there at number seven, which I have him here at number seven, he could possibly go here at number seven. But I got Isaiah Simmons uh, coming in at number seven overall to the Carolina Panthers. So uh, that now puts on the clock the. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals are now on the clock and with the eighth overall pick uh, you could see them go a couple different ways I know they've been rumored to they want to protect uh, they wanted to protect their asset they got last year in Kyler Murray the number one overall pick had a great season one uh, AP rookie of the year they go get DeAndre Hopkins uh, and, and get him not even for a first-round pick, so they won that trade. So they get DeAndre Hopkins with three years left on his deal. Probably will have to restructure that to keep him around, but uh, I think they're going to want to protect him. And you could go any three ways right here. You could go Makai Becton, offensive tackle from Louisville. You could also see a Andrew Thomas from Georgia, offensive tackle. Um, or you could see a, a Tristan Wirfs, offensive guard from Iowa. But with the eighth overall pick, the Arizona Cardinals in my mock draft 2.0. I have them selecting Makai Becton, offensive tackle, Louisville. And you watch the tape on him. Uh, he is a very, very good player, guys. He is going to uh, plug in and play right away. He is still a little bit raw, so you could see him possibly um, play. You, he's projected as an offensive tackle, but you could probably play him day one at guard, and then hopefully he projects into a defensive, uh, uh, I'm sorry, an offensive uh, tackle. But we'll see what happens there. I, I You watch the tape on him. He ran a sub-5. 40, uh, very, very quick, very got great hands, can get downhill very fast, um, more of a run blocker than a pass blocker right now, but I'm very, very interested to see uh, what Makai Becton kind of projects to because what he's done in this uh, draft process, he shot up a lot of boards, and I really, really like uh, I really, really like him coming in for the Arizona Cardinals and playing right away and giving Kyler Murray that protection that he needs. So, uh, with the ninth overall pick, that now puts the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars on the clock. You're going to hear the little um, little sound right there. And that puts the Jacksonville Jaguars now on the clock. And this is a team in full rebound mode right now, guys. They have traded away some players. Uh, Calais Campbell, also Jalen Ramsey. They lost uh, Dante Fowler. Uh-oh. That was the wrong one. Uh, so they play... Um, sorry about that. Uh, all right. So uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they trade Calais Campbell. They trade um, they trade Jalen Ramsey. They lose Dante Fowler. So uh, what, what do they need? Uh, they need an uh, interior defensive lineman. They need a cornerback. They need, uh, they need a lot of stuff. And with the ninth overall pick in the 2020 NFL Mock Draft 2.0, I had the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting Jeff Akuda, cornerback, Ohio State. And this is a guy I had number three overall in my past mock draft, guys. So uh, I had him sliding a little bit. And basically I had him sliding because I think that Derrick Brown possibly gets picked by the Lions. So if, if uh, Kuda does not slide uh, past number three, uh, you could see him landing in Jacksonville at number nine. Uh, he is a very, very good player. I think that... Uh, I think that he fits in with what they want to do in Jacksonville. Uh, if you look at uh, Tom Coughlin, what he did in, uh, with the Giants, they want an edge rusher. They want guys getting after the quarterback, and then they want to lock these guys up with cornerbacks. So got Jeff Akuda guys going number nine overall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let me know what you think down below so far. Uh, I am almost finished with my top ten picks. So, guys, thank you so much for following. Uh, if you haven't already, like it on Facebook or you know Apple, Spotify, anything like that. All right, so uh, that now puts the uh, that puts the Cleveland Browns at number ten overall. They are now on the clock, and what you can see with the Cleveland Browns, man, they need to protect Baker Mayfield. They need to protect him. Uh, and I think they will go offensive tackle at Cleveland. You could also see them uh, if a guy, maybe possibly Isaiah Simmons falls to 10 overall, you could see them go there. Uh, but with the uh, with the 10th overall pick in my draft, in my first one, I actually had uh, offensive tackle Andrew Thomas from Georgia going to the uh, Cleveland Browns. But I've changed it up, and I'm going Tristan Wirfs, offensive guard, Iowa, like I said, with all these guys, uh, he's got great hands. He's been taught well at Iowa. They've been putting guys in the league for the past few seasons. Uh, so I'm really, really excited to see what 
what Cleveland and their new GM do uh, with this first round pick. They also have an NFL draft. Uh, I'm sorry. They also have the a new GM. Uh, first, so it's his first draft. It's their head coach's first draft. Uh, so they decided to, to to go with Baker Mayfield this next past season. They did sign Case Keenum, but they need to protect Baker Mayfield, and I think they do that here with Tristan Wirfs at number 10, guys. Uh, if you'll give me just a second, I am just – I'm filling out my mock dress as I go just to make it easier for me. Uh, see which players – all right, so I got Willis going five. Um, then we got uh, two attack of Ola going uh, five guys, and I got six. I got Justin Herbert. Seven, Isaiah Simmons. Eight, I got Becton. Nine, I got Jeff Akuda. And then I got Worfs. All right, that makes it so much easier, guys. I'm sorry for that. But we got our first 10 picks out of the way right now. So uh, with the 11th overall pick, this now puts the New York Jets, and they are on the clock. What's up? What's up, Coach Drew? How you doing? Thank you for watching. All right, so uh, number eleven overall pick. This is the this is a new GM. This is gonna this is his second season as a GM, but he got selected as a GM after their draft last year. So this is gonna be his first overall uh, pick with the New York Jets. Can really really needs to solidify him and uh, get Sam Darnold a weapon. And with a receiver draft that is absolutely loaded, uh, you could go three ways right here. You could get you Henry Ruggs, wide receiver from Alabama. You could go uh, C.D. Lamb, wide receiver from Oklahoma. Uh, but I actually have them selecting my number one overall wide receiver in this NFL draft uh, NFL ready guy who I think can produce next year and have a thousand yard season uh, in his rookie year and that is Jerry Judy uh, wide receiver from Alabama so uh, I have the New York Jets selecting him at 11 and uh, Sam Darnold really really needs a playmaker on the outside Jerry Judy can play outside he can play inside he runs great routes he's one of the best route runners to come out in the past 20 years uh, he's also a physical guy ran a 4-5 at the 40 uh, can be more physical than people think. Uh, everyone thinks physicality, C.D. Lamb in this draft, but I will tell you, Jerry Judy, you watch the tape on him. He's a very physical player, and uh, I think he's going to uh, be do wonders for Sam Darnold and his development. Uh, so Jerry Judy with the 11th overall pick going to the New York Jets at 11. So uh, with the 12th overall pick, now that puts the Las Vegas Raiders on the clock, and Las Vegas Raiders, what you can see here uh, with them picking at, at 12, they got the 12th overall pick. They got the 19th overall pick. You, uh, they do. They did sign Marcus Mariota in the offseason, and they also have a Derek Carr on the roster. So I would, I don't see them going quarterback here, but I wouldn't be shocked if they did select a quarterback with one of the first two picks. I have them actually selecting a wide receiver to uh, pair with you know either Derek Carr or Marcus Mariota, whoever's going to win that job. Uh, they need a guy on the outside they, they they lost out on the Antonio Brown because he just couldn't act right um, but I have them selecting with the 12th overall pick the Las Vegas Raiders select C.D. Lamb wide receiver Oklahoma if you watch the tape on him a lot of comparisons to DeAndre Hopkins very physical receiver uh, ran you know sub 4-4 at the 40 um, but will go up and get it I mean some of his catches he made I know he made one in the senior bowl or the combine that like didn't even count I don't think he got his feet in but like him just going up and getting the ball he's special talent uh, this is the deepest wide receiver draft uh, I've, I've seen in a long long time and I think C.D. Lamb makes an immediate impact. A lot of people have him as the number one overall receiver um, on this draft. I have him as my number two overall receiver. Uh, Jerry Judy uh, at number one, and now C.D. Lamb coming off the board right after Jerry Judy at number 12 to the Las Vegas Raiders. So uh, that's their first pick going to Las Vegas. I think the Las Vegas fans, uh, the new fans who are going to be in Las Vegas can definitely get on that C.D. Lamb train. He's going to have a heck of a career. Should make an immediate splash his first year. Look for a second year, though, to really, really take off possibly an all-pro type season in his second year. All right, guys, and that now puts the San Francisco 49ers on the clock. Uh, so the San Francisco 49ers had traded. Uh, they traded their um, 
they I'm sorry. They traded uh they traded this pick the to the Indianapolis Colts having 13th overall pick. They trade uh, DeForest Buckner uh to the uh Indianapolis Colts for this 13th overall pick and everything I'm hearing is that the San Francisco 49ers uh should go wide receiver and like I said, we got the 11th overall pick of receiver, 12th overall pick of receiver. Why not stop there? Let's keep it going at 13 and I have uh the San Francisco 49ers selecting uh, Henry Ruggs, wide receiver, Alabama. I think that uh, his explosiveness, I don't know if y'all have watched, got to watch his, um, you know, he's got a mixtape out there for basketball out there just dunking on people, uh, really flying through the air. He's a very explosive guy, uh, great in the long jump and all that in high school, track speed, uh, really, really will translate, ran a 4-2-8 in the combine. So, uh, John Lynch and and uh, I know Kyle Shanahan uh, will know what to do with a receiver like Henry Ruggs, but I have Henry Ruggs going 13th overall and giving giving Jimmy Garoppolo a new weapon at 13. So uh, that is we are 13 picks in, guys. It has been uh, it's been a quick draft. I have already I did this mock draft earlier, and then I am also picking the players over here on the side. I got to remember to do that every pick. Okay, so this now puts the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, everybody's new fan base. Uh, I know a bunch of you weren't Tampa Bay Bucks fans before, so don't act like you're a, a uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan now. Okay, uh, they get rid of Jameis Winston, they bring in Tom Brady, and uh, you could see them possibly go a couple different scenarios here at 14. I know they've been rumored to maybe want to move up and get one of these uh, talented offensive linemen, the, one of the big four. Also, you could see them maybe getting uh, Tom Brady, one of his little gadgets out of the backfield, and a DeAndre Swift. Had DeAndre Swift going here at number three overall, I mean, I'm sorry, at number 14 overall in my first uh, mock draft, but uh, I've changed my mind. I think that they want to protect Tom Brady. Uh, they probably only have him for about two seasons, uh, so they want to protect him while he's there, and with that 14th overall pick, some of you UGA fans are going to be excited hearing this name. I have them selecting Andrew Thomas, offensive tackle, UGA. Uh, great hands. Great. Uh, he's probably the best pass blocker in this draft uh, with all the offensive tackles. Uh, he's only a junior, so he's young. He's 21 years old. Uh, once he gets your hands on you, man, uh, good luck with that. Andrew Thomas, he produced every... He started for all three years uh, at UGA. He, I have him as the fourth uh, offensive lineman coming off the board, but wouldn't be shocked if a team maybe went up early and traded up to go get an Andrew Thomas. So you could see him go anywhere from the number one offensive lineman off the board to the number four offensive lineman board. Uh, I have them Willis, Becton, Wirfs, Thomas, but I've seen them in any, uh, any kind of way. You could see those guys getting uh, drafted. So uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, select... Uh, Andrew Thomas, offensive tackle from UGA. All right, guys. So let me go ahead and just do this on my pick. And there he is right there, top available player. All right. All right, guys. So that is going to put on the clock the Denver Broncos. And you're going to hear that on the clock. So now the, the 15th overall selection, the Denver Broncos are now on the clock. And uh, John Elway, you know, he's kind of missed on some on some – very, very high impact players in the past. Uh, had to get the quarterback situation right. I think he had does have it right with a Drew Locke, a quarterback from Missouri. Had a great rookie year this past year when he did step in and play. Uh, but what do they do here at 15? If uh, if Henry Ruggs or one of these receivers is there at 15, you could easily see um, him pick him and get Drew Locke another weapon uh, to go along with Cortland Sutton. They already have another receiver uh from the Denver Broncos, but they could pair him up with a very athletic Henry Ruggs or maybe a C.D. Lamb or Judy if they are on the board there. Uh, but with losing Aqib Tlaib a few years ago, and now you lose uh, Roby two years ago, and then this past year you lose Chris Harris, your your cornerbacks are kind of depleted in a sense. And uh, this is a guy I would be very, very high on if the Atlanta Falcons were able to get him at 16. Uh, unfortunately, I think they're going to have to draft uh, trade up to get uh, this player I'm talking about, the Atlanta Falcons, because I have actually have him going at 15 uh, to the Denver Broncos. And with the 15th overall selection in my mock draft 2.0, I have the Denver Broncos selecting cornerback C.J. Henderson from Florida. And, man, he has got some great tape on him. 
uh, once he once he um, once he makes some plays, he is going to. Um, once he gets on the field, he's going to make plays. He's a two-time first-team All-SEC guy. Eleven pass breaks up breakups this past season. Uh, started five games as a true freshman at the University of Florida. So uh, the game definitely translate was a four-star guy coming out of high school. Really developed into a very very good player, and I have him as my number two cornerback coming off the board. C.J. Henderson from the University of Florida. So. Uh, that brings us now uh, with this pick right here. You're going to hear it on the on the ticker. Here it is. Okay. And that is a, when NFL fans hear that and you know your, your team's on the clock, it's an exciting time. Um, and with the 16th overall pick, that brings the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, with the Atlanta Falcons and Thomas Dimitrov have done the past few seasons, uh, the, the last two seasons, they, it's unacceptable for the talent they have on the field. And uh, with Thomas Dimitrov trading up and getting two offensive linemen this year and passing on players such as a Brian Burns or a... Um, Montez Sweat, who were drafted right after uh, them this this past year. Thomas Dimitrov needs to go get him one of these big defensive linemen. I truly, honestly believe that you win and lose in the in the trenches. So you you got to protect the offense. You got to protect the quarterback on offense, and you also have to get after the quarterback on defense. I truly believe that's where you win games. And uh, I think if Javon Kinlaw is here, defensive tackle uh, from the University of South Carolina, I don't see how the Atlanta Falcons could pass up on him. The Atlanta Falcons are rumored to possibly uh, go get an Isaiah Simmons to trade up or a C.J. Henderson. If they do not trade up and they stand pat and Javon Kinlaw is 16, that's who I have the Atlanta Falcons taking at pick number 16. Uh, and I think he's going to, he's got a high motor. Uh, I don't know if any of you know this. Javon Kinlaw actually grew up homeless. Uh, so the guy has a lot to play for. He's one of those NFL uh, stories you hear a lot about. Um, you know, his his past, it, it, it fueled him to where he is today. And I really, really, uh, really like the tape on Javon Kinlaw. One of his best tapes last year was against Georgia, who had a very, very big offensive line. A lot of those offensive linemen are going to be playing on Sundays. And he just absolutely wrecked the game uh, from snap number one. So I got Javon Kinlaw coming in as the 16th overall pick to the Atlanta Falcons. So, guys, we're going to take a short, short break. Just a little, you know, get some water real quick. Kind of refuel for the bottom half of the draft. So, guys, I will um, go on the live and answer some questions and things like that because I haven't been able to communicate. So, guys, so stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. Uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, guys. All right, welcome back, everybody, to Kicking It with Crowder. Uh, we are halfway through the NFL Mock Draft 2.0. This is my second Mock Draft I'm dropping, but I uh, wanted to just change some things up, have some players moving up, some players moving down, guys. So thank you uh, so much for joining me today. So uh, the Atlanta Falcons selected Javon Kinlaw with the 16th overall pick, and now with the 17th overall pick, some of you NFL fans, I know you want to hear this. This sound in just a, a week or so. And that puts the Dallas Cowboys, Jeremy Davis, where you at, man? Uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys uh, on the clock. And what are the Cowboys going to do uh, after missing the playoffs last year, in which was probably one of the worst divisions uh, in the history since the playoffs have been going on? Uh, just not a very good division. The Giants weren't good. The Redskins weren't good. Uh, Dallas Cowboys had all the chances in the world to get into the playoffs, and then anything can happen. But they did miss the playoffs. Uh, Carson Wentz uh, defeated. Uh, Dallas Cowboys and got into the playoffs. So uh, Dak Prescott, uh, what does Dak Prescott need? Uh, you could see them going a receiver here. I've seen Justin, I've seen Justin, um, I have seen Justin Herbert uh, linked. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, Justin Jefferson. Sorry, excuse me, guys. I have had Justin Jefferson linked to them at, at number 17. Uh, you could also see them go safety. Xavier McKinney, very talented safety from the University of Alabama. Uh, but I actually have them going edge rusher. They already have, uh, they already got the one edge rusher on one side. They need that other edge rusher coming from the other side. They lose, um, 
they lose the defensive end to the Chicago Bears and uh, and Robert Quinn. So uh, with the 17th overall selection in my mock draft 2.0, I have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Kalevon Chaseon, an uh, outside linebacker defensive end from LSU. And you watch the tape on him. He was a five-star guy coming out of high school. Uh, he's going to be a speed rusher. He's going to get outside the edge with his speed, uh, but can also has great hands and things like that. Can drop in coverage. I, I've watched the tape on him. He can do that a little bit uh, as well. But, uh, you know, getting after the quarterback, man, I, I tell you again and again, that is where it's won uh, in the NFL. So if you can protect your quarterback and if you can uh, – and you can get after the quarterback, you're going to be in a good uh, position. So uh, he was a first-team All-SEC guy this year, 13 and a half tackles for loss. Uh, you should see those numbers even go up uh, once he gets developed and everything in the NFL. So uh, Kalevon Chason going to the Dallas Cowboys at 17 to play for, uh, some people say, America's team. All right, so... Uh, that puts now on the clock with the 18th overall pick. This puts the Miami Dolphins now on the clock. And with the 18th overall pick, uh, you've already seen uh, you've already seen them select two attack of Viola in my mock draft uh, in this ex- same exact mock draft at number five. So what you could see here uh, for the Miami Dolphins at 18, they also have the 26th overall pick. So I think you go one of two ways here at 18 if you're Miami. Uh, you go and get one of the best offensive tackles on the board uh, and possibly a uh, Jones from Houston or a... Um, one of these other offensive tackles uh, from Boise State. Possibly you could see them maybe select one of them uh, early in this in the first round. Uh, but I have them uh, maybe trying a redo on the Alabama safety thing they did a few years ago with Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, of course, Minka Fitzpatrick played one season and wanted to be traded. They trade him to the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, who actually um, – traded them their pick as well so uh and what you see here and this is the 18th pick from the pittsburgh steelers so uh i actually have them selecting a uh safety um in this draft to replace aminka fitzpatrick rashard jones is getting on up there in age uh, the the great georgia great safety uh they had uh so i actually have the miami dolphins selecting uh xavier mckinney my number one rated safety uh from the university of alabama and if you turn on the table on him he is all over the field sideline to sideline breaking up passes uh intercepting balls picking up fumbles and taking them to the house i mean i absolutely love xavier mckinney he was the heart and soul of that alabama defense uh two-time uh or i'm sorry i know he's a first time uh all uh sec this past season uh but xavier mckinney what he can do uh from the safety position, you you see Earl, these these safeties, these freak athletes, Earl Thomases and things like that. I think Xavier McKinney can kind of be in that realm of players, and I think that uh, Xavier McKinney would be a great selection for uh, the Dallas Cowboys. At uh, he could be a great selection for the Dallas Cowboys at 17. That was very hard for me to pass on McKinney at 17, uh, but I don't think the Dolphins could pass on McKinney if he slides to them at 18 overall. So the Miami Dolphins, that's now their number two overall pick uh, in this draft. They also have one coming up at 26. So with that being said, this now puts the Las Vegas Raiders on the clock, guys. And I, I know you just want to hear that sound now. You've been watching. You just can't wait to hear that sound. The Las Vegas Raiders are now on the clock. And John Gruden uh, and Mike Mayock, the GM, what are they going to do here? I had them selecting Jerry, I'm sorry, a CD Lamb at number 12. So you could see them maybe go uh, quarterback here and go two offensive weapons. Um, but it, you know, that defense, you traded away Khalil Mack a few years ago. I know you drafted the young safety from Mississippi State this past year. You also selected the outside linebacker from Clemson as well um, last year at number four with uh, Farrell. So uh, I think they need to go get them a tackling machine uh, from the linebacker spot. And you could see them go any two ways right here. You could see them go uh, Patrick Queen, linebacker from LSU. Uh, had a lot of good tape this year. Played for the national champions uh, LSU. Um, but I, I actually have them going with a player, a linebacker who played in the Big 12 this year. I know uh, Big 12 doesn't get a lot of praise for playing defense, but this particular player was all over the field. He's very twitchy. Uh, he can rush the passer. He can also get after the quarterback, and then he can drop back in coverage. Uh, as a three-year starter at Oklahoma, 
102 tackles this past year, 17 tackles for loss, four pass breakups, and also four sacks coming from that linebacker spot. So uh, you go and get a, a, a linebacker who's all over the field, and then you get Jerry Judy, or I'm sorry, CD Lamb at number 12. I mean, that is a home run draft for Mike Mayock and John Gruden. And now you can kind of start building and doing what you want to uh, with this football team. So you get you a tackling machine like Kenneth Murray. You get your wide receiver uh, to pair with Derek Carr or Marcus Mariota uh, in C.D. Lamb. I mean, I think I would just absolutely love that if I was a Las Vegas Raiders fan. So I almost I had them going Jordan Love in my first mock draft, but the more I listen to Mike Mayock, I've heard him on some interviews the last few days, the more it sounds like they are going to skip on a quarterback and I think they're going to draft Kenneth Murray a linebacker from Oklahoma so let me go ahead and make that selection and with that selection being said that now puts the Jacksonville Jaguars on the clock guys and um, with this pick guys so I had them going uh, I had them going cornerback number at number nine with a Jeff Akuta sliding to them. If Jacksonville could get Jeff Akuta at number nine and, and hopefully he slides them, they don't have to move up. That would be a home run hit uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And what you can do with the 20th overall pick is I think you have to dress either an edge rusher or possibly uh, an offensive player uh, to go along with some of this, uh, some of the players you have on the offense already. Uh, and Garden Minshew, you Minshew Mania, yes, it was big time last year, and he can play football. He's definitely a serviceable quarterback. Is he your franchise guy? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not completely sold on on a sixth or seventh round draft pick from last year who played at East Carolina and then transferred, had a big year at Washington State, uh, burst onto the scene just because he's got a great personality, uh, the mustache, everything like that with guard Minshew. He is a good talent, but bring another quarterback in to compete with him. And uh, this quarterback I'm talking about bringing in right here is a quarterback who is has risen up draft boards a lot and can make a lot of plays uh, with his feet outside the pocket. Has been compared to a Patrick Mahomes, a poor man Patrick Mahomes, guys. And like I've said in the past, if you're being compared to Patrick Mahomes in any sense, uh, you are getting it done. So uh, Jordan Love, guys, I have him uh, going to the Jacksonville Jaguars with the 20th overall pick. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Jordan Love, quarterback, Utah State. So uh, this was a, a selection I had Herbert at in my first mock draft. Herbert's kind of risen up draft boards. Uh, I don't, I don't see, I see uh, Jordan Love going between twenty and thirty in this draft. And if I skipped on him at twenty, uh, it was going to be a tough decision for New England at twenty-three. If they pass picked up Jordan Love, I, I would see Jordan Love sliding no further than thirty uh, to the Green Bay Packers. But Jordan Love, uh, what he did his junior, uh, his sophomore year was a little bit better on tape than his junior year. Lost nine starters this past season, uh, but Jordan Love is a heck of a player. And if you can get him in and you can develop him, he doesn't have to play right away. He can learn from a guard Minshew who went through this. Uh, last year as well and then maybe you have something there with Minshew and Love and they can compete and you can see which guy uh, you want to build with uh, so I have them selecting Jordan Love quarterback uh, Utah State all right guys so with that being said that will now put the Philadelphia Eagles on the clock and boy, I know they love their football in Philly, okay? And this past season, uh, they had a lot of uh, players on offense, uh, sp uh, specifically wide receivers, uh, drop a lot of passes. I mean, they probably led the league in drop passes. Alshon Jeffrey's getting on up there. You got the two tight ends with Ertz and Dallas Gobert. Uh, you got those players. Um, but what are you going to do um, with wide receiver? And this is a very, very deep wide receiver class. Carson Wentz, go get you a, go get Carson Wentz a new toy to play with. And I actually have them selecting with the 21st overall over overall pick in the kicking it with Crowder mock draft 2.0. I have the Philadelphia Eagles selecting Justin Jefferson, wide receiver LSU guys. Uh, if you watch the tape on him this past year, he was explosive. Once he got the ball in his hands, he was making guys miss. His runs run after the catch was incredible. And also, uh, not only that, he had 111 catches playing with Joe Burrow this past year. So Chase and Jefferson definitely had the best one-two combo. Uh, then you have the, the Heisman Trophy 
Trophy winning quarterback you played with. Uh, Justin Jefferson's brother, of course, Jordan played a quarterback at LSU. So the family genes are there. And I think Justin Jefferson uh, could go higher in this draft. You could see him go 15 uh, to Denver. You could also see him go 17 to the Cowboys. Uh, Jacksonville could, could use another weapon on the outside if they believe in Minshew. So I really think that uh, Justin Jefferson is a, is a high riser in this draft. And I have him solid as my number four overall uh, receiver. And he's definitely climbed up that for me. I've had some guys fall a little bit. I've had some some guys rise uh, in the wide receiver um, selection. So that makes it four right now uh, going in my NFL mock draft. And guys, I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. I have some more receivers coming off the board. So you're going to see six to six to seven receivers get selected this year in the in the NFL draft I certainly believe that and Justin Jefferson is going to be a playmaker from day one and I really really uh, think that uh, he's going to get it done uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles so let me just make this selection real quick on here there he is Justin Jefferson all right and now I'm gonna put on the clock All right. <clears throat> so, with that with that sound, you know someone's on the clock and that puts the Minnesota Vikings on the clock. So, they have the number 22 overall pick, they have the number 25 overall pick. Could they package those two guys and maybe go get a stud receiver or replace uh, – they need a defense. They need a, a new cornerback. They lost two cornerbacks in free agency. Uh, they also lost uh, Everson Griffin. They lost uh, Stephon Diggs. I mean, you could go any type of way. Uh, I actually have them staying pat and staying at 22 and 25 and getting two impact players on both sides of the ball. So the Minnesota Vikings uh, with a 22 overall pick in the NFL Mock Draft 2.0. I actually have them selecting Christian Fulton, cornerback from LSU. This guy was a five-star receiver uh, coming out of high school, and he lived up to everything uh, and then some. Led led LSU to a national championship this past year. Uh, was a two-year starter, had 38 tackles, and then one interception, 14 pass breakups as a junior. Uh, may have actually been their number two corner. Uh, I know they had a true freshman last year, Stingley, who is a phenomenal talent. He'll be taking his talents to the NFL in a few years, but Christian Fulton, uh, you watch the tape. Uh, he had a bunch of pass breakups as a sophomore. Uh, he did get suspended early on in his career, so look out for uh for that some maybe uh character issues and things like that but uh, i think everything i've gotten from christian fulton is he's a competitor he's going to step in he can play in the slot can also play outside as well and uh you don't have to rush him in uh per se so i actually have uh, christian fulton being selected 22 overall to the minnesota vikings all right and this this next team is going to pick 23rd man you haven't heard them pick 23rd uh, in a long time and uh, that now puts the New England Patriots on the clock guys and there is no there is no Tom Brady uh, you they, you get rid of Tom Brady and what is the first draft pick under the new Tom Brady uh, I'm sorry now Bill Belichick and no Tom Brady what is the first draft pick going to be post Tom Brady uh, you could go quarterback here you could go linebacker you could go edge rusher you could go receiver in a loaded wide receiver draft so uh, I actually have uh, the New England selecting uh, is an edge rusher who's really shot up draft boards. And the more tape you see on him, the more stuff you like. He's played at a Wisconsin program who has produced a lot of uh, offensive linemen. But now uh, I actually have them selecting uh, the number 23 overall pick. The New England Patriots select Zach Bond. He's an outside linebacker, edge rusher uh, from Wisconsin. Really fits that Patriots uh, that Patriot way. Is going to put his foot in the dirt and come to work. Put his hand in the dirt and come to work work every single day uh he's 6'3 240 pounds uh really reminds me and um really reminds me of like a tj watt type player and tj watt a lot of teams passed on him he went in the 30s uh when he was drafted so i'm really excited to see where zach bond goes you could see him go 23 uh, 23 to the Patriots, 24 to the Saints, or possibly 28 to the Ravens. So I have Bond definitely sliding in to that first round. Uh, I think I got a first round grade on him uh, automatically. So he I, he will be in the first round, I think. Uh, but if he's not in the first round, he'll be very, very uh, early second round. So um, Zach Bond made a lot of plays for a Wisconsin team that uh, shocked a lot of people this past year. They really, really played good. 
And I'm trying to find him real quick. Bon. So I can put him in there. Boom. He is selected. All right. All right. So there we go. I can just type in the player. That makes it a lot easier. All right. Let's see right here. Patrick Queen. All right. So, with that being said, guys, the New Orleans Saints are now on the clock. And after three devastating postseason losses, uh, what is next for the New Orleans Saints? Drew Brees is on the end of his career, and uh, he, you know, he he still has some left in the tank. You know, he signed for uh, forty million dollars for two seasons, so you know, at least uh, you got Drew Brees for one season. I know Sean Payton came out and said he thinks this is Drew Brees' last season, uh, but you could possibly see Drew Brees uh, play two more seasons and continue to break. Uh, record. So what do they need? They got the wide receiver in Thomas. Uh, they got Kamara, the running back. Uh, they have a good offensive line. They did lose. Um, they did lose Malcolm Jenkins. I'm sorry. They added uh, Malcolm Jenkins uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, so they're good in the safety position. So I actually have them selecting a linebacker, and they're not going to go. Ver they're, they're not going to have to go very far uh, to select this linebacker who uh, I, who played his college ball at LSU in Louisiana. And with the 24th overall pick, the New Orleans Saints select Patrick Queen, linebacker uh, from LSU. And what what's the what's what's this thing with Patrick Queen? He's a first year starter. Uh, had 80 five tackles this year, 12 for loss, three sacks, uh, two pass breakups. So his film, uh, he was all over the film and uh, he started four games as a sophomore as well. So has really, really uh, improved the past two seasons. And I really like his tape. You know, he's, he's a run stopper, uh, but he can cover guys, but you will see him basically on, on first and second down, getting after the quarterback, uh, getting after running backs, uh, covering guys uh, coming across the middle and things like that. So Patrick Queen, uh, have him going uh, number 24 overall to the New Orleans Saints. Uh, and with that being said, uh, that now puts the Minnesota Vikings, who I just talked about just a few minutes ago, this puts them back on the clock. And when you hear that sound, guys, you know that your team has to knock this draft out of the park. And uh, with two first-round draft picks, it makes it that much uh more, you gotta you gotta hit on these draft picks. You can't select a guy and he just doesn't develop. Uh, you get the extra fifth year option with some of these first round picks, guys. So if they play well, you you can lock them up for a fifth year and then possibly sign them uh, to a long term extension. And the Minnesota Vikings, guys. They they lost Stephon Diggs and they lost Xavier Rose. They lost e Everson Griffin. Excuse me. So they lose Griffin. And I had them selecting Christian Fulton at 22. So uh, you could go edge rusher right here, A.J. Espenza from Iowa. You could also go Gross Matos from Penn State. Uh, but I actually had them going on the uh, offensive side of the football. Uh, so you go. I want them to replace Devon Diggs. So they're not going to pro probably be able to replace him with one player. Uh, but you can start with a 6'3", 220-pound receiver from the University of Baylor. Uh, really, really high on Denzel Mims, guys. Uh, Three-year starter for Baylor. Earned first team all Big 12 honors this past year. 66 catches, uh, over 1,000 yards, also 12 touchdowns. So he's got the frame. He's not. He's bigger than Stephon Diggs. You already have Adam Thielen. So you pair Adam Thielen uh, with a guy like Denzel Mims who can be a red zone target for Kirk Cousins. You already have the tight end in Irv Smith and Kyle Rudolph. Uh, so you have those two tight ends. You go get Kirk Cousins another weapon. Uh, you have Dalvin Cook. And you and you could go. You could see them easily go two defensive players right here with replacing that defense. But I have them going Denzel Mims, wide receiver uh, from Baylor, uh, with the 25th overall pick, guys. And and Denzel Mims that that marks my. Uh, that marks my number five wide receiver drafted so far in this draft. So stay tuned. I do have more wide receivers coming off the board. A little spoiler alert right there. Okay, guys. So uh, with the 26 overall pick now, the Miami Dolphins are on the clock. And with that being said, you know I got to play the clock music. So Miami Dolphins, their third overall pick. Um, 
They, they're, what, what are they going to do with this third overall pick? Are they going to trade 18 and 26 and try to move up? Or are they going to try to move up in the draft and get a quarterback? If they stand pat and get a quarterback at five and then make an, take an impact-type player like Xavier McKinney, I, like I have them taking at 18, uh, you could really see them do uh, knock this draft out of the park with this last pick. So uh, the last pick right here, it was either an offensive tackle, one of these talented offensive tackles you have in this draft, or uh, a little gadget a uh, guy who can run between the tackles, can help your quarterback out, be your quarterback's best friend, pair Tua Tagovailoa with DeAndre Swift and then Xavier McKinney, three SEC guys who performed all SEC. I think that would just be an absolute home run for the Miami Dolphins. And you can really start to rebuild in a division that doesn't have Tom Brady anymore. Tom Brady is gone. I know the Dolphins fans and Bills fans, uh, they're they're – singing hallelujah okay i know tom brady they had to deal with him for 20 years but the division uh, i'm not sure if the buffalo bills are there yet they are a very very good football team they made the playoffs this past season but are they can they step up and win that division or can the miami dolphins led by brian flores and some of these free agents they had they signed uh can they can they make an impact and possibly be a wild card team uh next year with these three selections so uh the D miami dolphins i have them at five selecting two attack of viola i also have them selecting Xavier McKinney at 18 and DeAndre Swift at 26. So heck of a draft by the Miami Dolphins. So that now puts on the clock at the number 27 overall pick, the Seattle Seahawks. And, and I really, really enjoy watching Russell Wilson play football. Uh, Pete Carroll, they go together very, very well. Uh, I really, really enjoy uh, watching them them. Uh, compete and, and coach together and play together. They need. They're going to need a guy out on the outside, guys. They're going to need. Uh, a, they could. They could go receiver. They've already paired with Lockett and uh, DJ Metcalf. D I'm sorry, DK Metcalf. Also, you could see them going a. Uh, you could see them going uh, defense. And with Clowney, you don't really know what Clowney's doing right now. So. Uh, Clowney is is a free agent right now, so you could see them possibly selecting an edge rusher. And with the 27th overall pick, guys, in the 2020 NFL Kicking It With Crowder Mock Draft 2.0, I had the Seattle Seahawks selecting a A.J. Espenza, defensive end uh, from the University of Iowa. And his tape uh, his tape is very, very good. His, his 18 tape's a little bit better than his 2019 tape, but he can be a guy that you can put in the system and rotate uh, along the defensive end, uh, playing you know eight or nine guys on the defensive line. He can give you valuable snaps from day one. Uh, probably you know probably not going to be a uh, maybe just be a third down type player to start with early in his career. But I think AJ Espenza, uh, the talent is there. He was a very very highly recruited. Uh, player coming out of high school five-star recruit so AJ Espenza uh, one of the maybe the Falcons to look at him uh, earlier in the draft but I have the uh, Seattle Seahawks selecting AJ Espenza number 27 uh, he was a first team uh, he was a uh, second team All-American this year 49 tackles 14 and a half uh, for loss and 11 and a half sacks guys so the production is there and I think that uh, that the Seattle Seahawks are going to get a great player at 27. All right, guys. So uh, that is going to put the going to put the Baltimore Ravens now on the clock, and the, and the Baltimore Ravens. I could talk about them all day. What they did this past season with Lamar Jackson, uh, owning the best record uh, in the entire NFL, but losing, uh, but losing guys in the uh, in the divisional round to the uh, Tennessee Titans, who kind of bullied them a little bit, ran the ball down their throat, and you're not used to seeing uh, the Baltimore Ravens uh, be affected like that uh, up front. And also, uh, they they not only got after Lamar Jackson, but they their offensive line um, really shut down that defensive line in that in that game. So the Baltimore Ravens, what do you do here? Uh, you're 14 and two. Um, you could go edge rusher. Uh, you could go go get some guys for that defense. I know you got Judon, who you franchise. You also have uh, some other players as well uh, with the Baltimore Ravens. But I'm going to go get Lamar Jackson, one of these new toys. I, 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 I can be a quarterback's best friend, either a running back out of the backfield to catch passes or a very, very reliable wide receiver. And with the number 30 overall pick, I do have T. Higgins, uh, wide receiver uh, from the University of Clemson, going to uh, the Baltimore Ravens here at 28. 
T. Higgins is a guy I really, really like. His tape last year was a little bit better than this year, uh, which is weird that that, that that has happened with some of these guys. Uh, their tape the year before was a little bit better, but uh, it's because these coaches game plan for players like T. Higgins. Man, you, you watch the tape, you see T. Higgins, you better come into with a game plan uh, defending T. Higgins, guys. So uh, T. Higgins, he's a bigger receiver. I know they got Hollywood Brown last year. Uh, he's a 5'10", kind of slot guy uh, going across the middle and things like that. But T. Higgins is a big guy, 6'4", um, explosive game-changing receiver, can really uh, got has great size and also great speed. He's not the 4'2 burner or anything like that, but he's a solid 4'5 guy, and uh, he's a very solid vertical threat. Uh, really reminds me a little bit of a Devontae Adams type player. So I have the Baltimore Ravens, guys. What's up, Zach? I got the Baltimore Ravens selecting T. Higgins, wide receiver from the University of Clemson at 28. If they do not pass, if they pass on T. Higgins uh, here at 28, possibly see them go after a, uh, an edge rusher uh, who actually uh, it would be my next pick if, if Baltimore passes on him. Uh, look for Baltimore to select uh, either at 28 or 29. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to select T. Higgins over here in my little mock. I got T. Higgins on the board. And that's going to put the uh, Tennessee Titans, who I just talked about beating uh, the Baltimore Ravens this past year. And uh, what, what Tennessee did, man, they, they ran the football. They they did not uh, turn over the football. Ryan Tannehill managed the game. Derrick Henry, uh, what he did in the playoffs, those three games, uh, you know, he's incredible. Uh, led the league in rushing. Uh, they did lose one of their offensive tackles to the Cleveland Browns, so you could possibly see them draft an offensive tackle in a very very good offensive uh, line draft. Um, but what I have them doing is getting after the quarterback, man. You're going to hear it time in and time out. You got to protect the quarterback and you have to get after the quarterback. And they they could use an edge rusher in Tennessee. And Mike Vrabel, you know he loves these defensive guys. That's his pedigree. He's a linebacker and uh, he wants to get after the quarterback. And what I have Tennessee selecting uh, with the 29th overall pick in my mock draft 2.0, I have them selecting Yater Grossmatos. He's a defensive in edge rusher from Penn State. Uh, very, very uh, good player. Had 10 sacks last two seasons. Uh, when he pops up on the tape, you notice him. He's number 99 uh, this past season uh, for Penn State. So let me try to find him real quick. There he is. All right, so Gross Matos, he's a two-year starter, like I said. Uh, first team all Big Ten this past year, 15 tackles for loss, nine and a half sacks as a junior, guys. So um, Tennessee, I think he, they get great value here at 29 for him, and he can be a guy who can come in on third down and get after the quarterback. So um, – you could see Tennessee go offensive tackle here to replace the guy they lost to Cleveland, um, but I do have them selecting Ed Rusher Gross Matos from uh, Penn State, and he is a heck of a player. I know James Franklin uh, hated to lose them uh, this past year. All right, so that now puts the Green Bay Packers uh, on the clock. Let me see right here. There he is. All right, go ahead and play that real quick. <clears throat> So, with the 30th overall pick, the Green Bay Packers are now on the clock. And uh, everything I'm reading from, everything I'm, I'm sorry, everything I'm reading is that the Green Bay Packers are going to go wide receiver right here. So, uh, with that being said, you have, some, you have some talented receivers already off the board. Uh, had T. Iggins going to Green Bay at 30, uh, but just decided to go Baltimore uh, with T. Higgins at 28 on this mock draft. Had T. Higgins fallen to them at another draft. Um, but I have the Green Bay selecting. You could you could see a, maybe a Denzel Mims if he's still on the board here at 30. You could possibly see him selected. But I have them selecting. And he, this guy's going to play in the slot. Going to remind a lot of people kind of a Randall Cobb type receiver. And his name is Brandon Ayuk. He's a wide receiver from Arizona State. Uh, Kerm Edwards is very, very high on him. Coaching him the past two seasons uh, for the uh, Arizona State um the Arizona State football team. Uh, Herm Edwards is very, very high on him. He's got great hands. He runs great routes. He's six foot, uh, 215 pounds, can get in and out of his breaks, uh, great hands. And I really think that uh, you get a guy like like this can extend, he can extend Aaron Rodgers' career, hopefully a few years. You already have the very talented wide receiver, Devontae Adams. But, you, you know, the Green Bay Packers haven't really been able to find that number two wide receiver. They have a couple guys who are very talented, but they haven't been able to 
find that number two uh, overall receiver. He's a sure-handed pass catcher, guys, and he's really effective in short and in intermediate routes. So, uh, you know, the little slants, the little digs, and and uh, the in routes and things like that, guys. So I'm very, very excited to see Brandon Ayuk paired up with an Aaron Rodgers-type player. Uh, thought about going quarterback here at 30. Also thought about maybe going offensive tackle at 30 as well. Uh, but I'm going to get Aaron Rodgers one of these brand-new weapons in a very, very stacked and loaded wide receiver class. So that is my last wide receiver uh, coming off the board. Uh, and with that being said, that guys, that is seven wide receivers I had uh, going in my, my first round. So seven wide receivers going in the first round. I've seen as many as eight in the mock drafts. And you're going to see a lot of wide receivers come off the board here in the second round as well. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to select Ayuk right here in my mock draft. There he is. And that now puts the, uh, with the 31st overall pick, it puts the San Francisco 49ers on the clock. And the, uh, the they, they did lose in the Super Bowl this past year, but I will say they, uh, they did a great job in the rebuild. Uh, John Lynch, what he did to this football team, hiring Kyle Shanahan and kind of believing in that kind of downhill zone scheme they run. They got the three running backs, uh, the three-headed monster with Coleman and Mozart and uh, the former Georgia Southern running back as well, uh, McKeenan and um, – uh, Matt Breida. So they got four really r good running backs. They're probably going to have to cut at least one of those guys this uh, coming season. Uh, so what do they do? I had them selecting a wide receiver, Henry Ruggs at 13. Uh, you could maybe see them kind of revamp that defensive line after losing to Forrest Buckner. You got Armstead, you got Bosa, you also got Kittle, a tight end. Uh, so you got a lot of skill there on the offensive and defensive line. So what will they do uh, here at 31? Uh, I think they may sure up that that defensive back, uh, that defensive backfield. And what better way to do that with a guy who can cover uh, a number one wide receiver? And that is Jeff Gladney uh, with the 31st overall pick, the San Francisco 49ers select Jeff Gladney, quarterback uh, from TCU, a guy who has really snuck up on my, my radar, uh, has come into my top 50 uh, pro prospects. I had him a little outside in the fifth in the early 50s slid him now inside the top 50 and you watch the tape on him he is a very very good receiver can can absolutely make plays all over the field can cover your best guy and he's got great ball skills so jeff gladney uh, he's a four-year starter at TCU. So you start for four years. You know you you came in. You're ready. You're prepared, uh, ready to make an impact possibly in the NFL in his first year. Uh, all big first team, uh, all big 12. Also had 31 tackles, one interception this past year. One reason they didn't have that inter high interception number, teams didn't throw his way. He was that good. Uh, and also he was a second team uh all Big 12 guy last year had 41 tackles as well. So Jeff Gladney uh, going to step in uh, and and produce hopefully for the San Francisco 49ers team. And I have him going at 31 overall, guys. So with that being said, I'm going to pick Gladney in my mock right here. There he is. And with that being said, this now puts the Kansas City Chiefs on the clock, guys. So, uh, Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl champions from last year. Uh, what more do you need, man, from 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 Andy Reid and, and Patrick Mahomes? They got it done this past season, and Patrick Mahomes only going in now uh, to his. This will be his fourth season. He's only started two years. Remember, he sat out his first season. So you got the offense, you got the quarterback, and then you also got Tyree Kill, the wide receiver. They're going to lock him up. You got Kelsey, the tight end, right there. So you got the three-headed monster there. They also have a very very talented running back in Damian Williams. He's more of a little scat back. Can catch the ball out of the backfield, but also run between the tackles. Uh, I'm sure you guys remember him in the Super Bowl. Had a very, very uh, great game, over 100 yards and, and two touchdowns. Uh, so what do they do at 32? Kansas City, you could see them go possibly another running back to pair with Damian Williams. I like. Uh, I really like um, Cam Akers, a running back who I have going in the second round. I like J.K. Dobbins, another running back I have going in the second round. Jonathan Taylor, a guy who slid a little bit for me. I had him at 24 overall at Miami. Really, really thought about him here at number 32 with Kansas City Chiefs to pair up with Damian Williams. More of a scat back, catch the ball of the backfield guy. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, more of a downhill guy, run, run between the tackles. 
But what I decided to do here at Kansas City, they did lose uh, their cornerback who went to the Redskins, Kendall Fuller. Uh, so they lose him. They also uh, have a good safety in Tyron Matthew. Thought about Grant Delpit here at 32 guys but what i decided to do was i decided to take a good very very good cornerback uh, you're going to be in a division uh with the raiders with the chargers and with the broncos you're going to need a, a, a number one corner uh type player to step up and with that number 32 overall pick uh the kansas city chiefs i have them selecting A.J. Terrell, cornerback from Clemson, uh, to round out my first round. Uh, he is a cornerback from Clemson. Uh, a lot of you guys remember him for getting burned a few times, uh, getting burned a few times in the national championship game. And I will say, if you put those two plays behind him, what A.J. Terrell did this year at Clemson was really, really good. He had a lot of good film. He's been in uh, that Clemson program that has produced a lot of NFL players. He knows how to go to work every day. Dabo Sweeney is very high on A.J. Terrell, and I think that he's a very athletic guy with high upside. He's physical. He's not going to back down from competition, and that's what you need with a corner. You need a guy who's going to step in, step in front of the wide receiver, look him dead in the eyes, and know you're going to have a long day uh, ahead of you. So uh, he's a very, very good crossing, uh, crossing the field and covering other uh, wide receivers as well, so can come out of the zone or can play man-to-man -man. Uh, A.J. Terrell a cornerback uh, from the University of Clemson coming in at 32 guys so hey Tell me, guys, tell me what you think, guys. Tell me what you uh, what you think down below. Don't be afraid to comment. Let me know if you agree with my mock draft. It's just a mock draft, guys. Don't take it too seriously, okay? So I really, really enjoy bringing this to you today. I uh, also want to shout out Columbus Television, Columbus Podcasting Studio for having me here today. I really, really enjoyed it, guys. So you can find me every Wednesday. I will be going live every Wednesday with Kicking It With Crowder. Don't forget, guys, you can find me on Facebook. You can also find me on Apple. You can find me on Spotify and the iHeartRadio app. So I will be dropping this content uh, later on tomorrow or Friday. What we're going to be doing is post-editing and everything, getting it ready. And then what we'll also be doing is dropping the podcast uh, tomorrow or later tonight as well with some really good audio and things like that, guys. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. It has been a pleasure. Come kick it. Uh, every week with Kicking It With Crowder. Thank you, guys. <laughs>